Welcome back to the 2024 edition of my Security Plus Exam Cram series with continuing coverage of Domain 1. In Section 1.3, we'll be focusing on change management and its impact to security. From business processes and technical implications to documentation and version control, we'll have a look at where you need to focus to maintain security posture through change over time. So not just the what of change control, but the why. Great information whether you're a security staffer or a security leader. Lots to cover, so let's get to it. Welcome back to the Security Plus Exam Cram 2024 edition and our continuing coverage of Domain 1. In this installment, Section 1.3 will be focused on the impact of change management on security. The 1.3 in the syllabus is explain the importance of change management processes and the impact to security. So we'll be focused on business processes impacting security operations from approval to testing to backout plans, maintenance windows. We'll look at technical implications. And finally, documentation and version control. So these are really more about what these processes solve for and why do we use them. And we're about to cover every one of them right here, so buckle up. And I'm going to take one step further right out of the gate and mention configuration management because when we make changes, often we are affecting system or application configuration. And if we manage these disciplines correctly, it can prevent security-related incidents and outages. That's our top-level goal. So to cover off configuration management just briefly, it ensures that systems are configured similarly, that configurations are known and documented. It ensures that a true current state is known to all, and perhaps more importantly, that our intended current state is actually enforced and in an automated way where possible. We can automate some of that using baselining, which ensures that systems are deployed with a common baseline or starting point. Imaging is a common baselining method, for example, in virtual machines or even in desktops. But I can establish baseline configurations for just about any service. And in the world of CICD, continuous integration and continuous deployment, I can often automate implementation of that baseline through a pipeline, through a DevOps pipeline. And then we have change management, our focus here, which is the policy outlining the procedures for processing changes. Change management helps reduce risk associated with changes, including outages or weakened security from unauthorized changes. To do this right requires changes to be requested, approved, tested, and documented. Going a step further in change management, I want to clarify the difference between change management and change control. You'll often hear these two terms used interchangeably and the difference in their meaning may not always be clear. So change control refers to the process of evaluating a change request within an organization and deciding if it should go ahead. In this process, requests are generally sent to the change advisory board, often called the CAB, to ensure that it is beneficial to the organization. So essentially, change management is the policy that details how changes will be processed in an organization. And change control is the process of evaluating a change request to decide if it should be implemented. So change management is guidance on the process. And change control is the process in action. Now let's talk through business processes impacting security operation because any change management program should address a few important business processes, including approval, which ensures that every proposed change is properly reviewed and cleared by management before it takes place. This ensures alignment across teams and really throughout the organization. Changes should always have clear ownership. We want to clearly define who is responsible for each change by designating a primary owner. And that owner will be the key decision maker and sponsor of the change. Stakeholder analysis identifies all the individuals and groups within the organization and outside the organization that might be affected by the change. 
So this enables the team to contact and coordinate with all relevant stakeholders. Impact analysis is review of the potential impacts of a change, including any side effects. This ensures the team is considering potential impact to systems and stakeholders. And we have testing, which first and foremost confirms that a change will work as expected by validating it in a test environment before production rollout. From a process perspective, test results should be captured in the change approval request. This will be one of the core questions every change approval board is going to ask. That same board will also want to talk about your back out plan, which provides detailed step-by-step -step sequences that the team should follow to roll back if the change goes wrong. This ensures systems can be quickly restored to an operational state if we have a problem. And often, as a matter of policy, organizations won't allow a change to be approved if it hasn't been tested and if it does not include a backout plan. And then we need to think about when a change should be rolled out, which is where maintenance windows come into play. A standing window of time during which changes can be implemented that minimizes impact to the business, often outside of business hours. There are certainly inconsequential changes that can happen during business hours, but when we think about critical services, it's going to be outside of business hours, and often the maintenance window is defined in customer contracts. And when you roll all of these processes up together, these elements together can define a standard operating procedure for change management. And remember, any change that affects system or data exposure may impact security. So we need to make sure we update our documentation, our data flow diagrams, and potentially do threat modeling to identify any new attack surfaces and address any new potential vulnerabilities with appropriate security controls. So shifting gears, let's talk through the technical implications that need to be considered as part of the change management process. Do we need to update allow or deny lists on our firewall? Are there any restricted activities here, potentially involving sensitive data? What are our expectations of downtime? Any application restarts? Impact to legacy applications? And what other dependencies are there in the service chain? We need to check all of these boxes in our planning process, and at the end of the day, we're looking to address any new exposures, even temporary exposures of our data or our systems. Why? Well, to avoid service disruptions and security vulnerabilities. As system configurations change, attack surfaces may change as well, and we need to plan for that throughout the change process. So let's drill down on each of these technical implications. We'll start with allow and deny list. So firewall rules, application allow deny list, access control list may all need to be updated. Some activities may need to be restricted, like data updates during database replication or migration. If you have an orders database being updated while you're replicating data, you could lose orders. So we need to think about that. And we need to consider any potential downtime because some changes may cause service interruptions which result in direct impact to the business. This is where our maintenance window comes into play. Next, application restarts. So putting controls around risky activities like application and service restarts. Whether that's taking a security function offline for its update or taking down a business application. We need to think about how that's going to affect service availability, and if we're taking down security-related functions, how that affects our security posture during the time that system is offline. And then we have to think about legacy applications. So modifications to legacy apps that may not support some changes, like component or service version updates. Legacy applications are a big reason many organizations still use a hybrid cloud. Because the advantage of the public cloud is your services are always up to date and sometimes the organization is not ready to update certain applications and services. And in some cases you may have a legacy application that's coasting to end of life and so you need to maintain that aging service until the business is ready to retire it. And legacy applications bring with them special security 
concerns, you know, certainly vulnerabilities, because an application that was developed or architected many years in the past was created without awareness of modern security concerns. There are going to be risk factors that the architects didn't think about or could not be aware of 10 or 15 years ago. And then we need to think about dependencies. So tracking dependencies between systems and services to identify downstream effects of current and future changes. If I'm updating a backend API or database, am I making a change that's going to impact the applications that leverage that data or that API, for example? So let's move on to documentation. So documentation helps us understand the current state of and the changes to our operating environment. This is a weak spot of many organizations and a real concern when it comes to security. Documentation provides team members with a repository of information about the way that systems and applications are designed and configured. It serves as an ongoing reference for current and future team members. And your change management processes should ensure that changes are not closed out until all documentation and diagrams are updated. It is a continuous process across new deployments and changes, and there may be multiple teams involved in keeping documentation of a system or service fully up to date. And we have to remember that documentation applies not only to the environment, but to policies and procedures that direct operation and support of that environment. At the end of the day, there are some upsides and a downside we need to think about from a security perspective. So on a positive note, documentation provides benefits to IT and security operations, to business continuity and disaster recovery efforts, to incident response, and to future design and planning iterations. Having a good picture, an accurate picture of current state is going to be helpful to everyone trying to secure and support that system or service. And we need to remember that you cannot fully secure a system or service for which you do not have a true picture of current state. If you're implementing security controls based on inaccurate information, you may be leaving security vulnerabilities open to potential attackers that no one is aware of. And we'll close out 1.3 on version control, which is a formal process used to track current versions of software code and system or application configurations. Most organizations use a formal version control system that is integrated into their software development processes. And for most organizations, this is some platform based on Git, which is the most widely used version control system in the world, invented by Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux. Developers modify the code and they check it into a version control system that can identify conflicts in their changes with those made by other developers. And any version control system that is Git or based on Git is going to do so with great accuracy. It also tracks the current dev, test, and production versions of code. And when we think about the DevSecOps discipline, security is everyone's responsibility. So we're going to be scanning the code that's being checked into that Git repository. There will likely be multiple types of security testing involved from very early in the development process. And just one of those can be scanning of code that's checked in to our Git repository. Code for different environments is typically tracked in Git using code branches. We might have a dev branch, a test branch, a main branch for production. For the exam though, Focus on the function of version control, not on any specific version control system. But if any version control system is mentioned, it's going to be Git. And congratulations, you have reached the end of section 1.3 of this Security Plus exam cram. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. If you have questions, reach out in the comments below the video or directly to me on LinkedIn. I'll look forward to meeting you again in section 1.4 here in a couple of days. And until next time, take care and stay safe.